Hi, this is Matt Donegan for Business Spotlight. I'm here with Bernie. Bernie, tell me something about you and your company, please. Okay, where do I start? I think, uh, you know, my, my company is now 17 years of age. Uh, we started with one care home. Now we have grown up to 31 care homes and soon to be 34. And our plan is to double the size of the company in the next five years. Wow, double the growth in five years. That's going to be significant growth. Do you think there's going to be challenges around bringing new team members on board and, and integrating different um business units inside the main business unit? People are the, the biggest challenge. People. You know, finding finding the right people, doing the right job is always a challenge. Yeah. But we 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 try and do the best we can. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and so should Bernie, tell me more about what you actually provide. You said about your growth. What? Tell me more about the business. So it's a, it's a care home business. Tell me more yeah. about where the units are, um, how, you, how you develop the business. Tell me more about that. So we, we are predominantly an old age care home company, right? Uh, and so we, we tend to look after people, people of old age with dementia, as well as nursing, nursing element. Our care homes are all in the Northwest and the North. So many ways it's from Blackpool all the way to Grimsby, uh, Hull, uh, it's basically M62 corridor. Right, okay. Bernie, you're looking at significant growth. How do you identify the, the do you develop the, the homes from scratch or are you, you, are you acquiring existing homes? Predominantly we acquire problematic homes and right. then turn them around. So so we don't, currently, we don't operate any brand new wells. Uh, we only buy problematic homes and turn them around. Right. Uh, but in the in the new doubling of the, the homes to the next five years, there will be some brand new homes as well. Right, okay. That's so significant growth in different areas. Geographies, are you looking to extend the geographies as well? Marginally, but predominantly, we will be sitting in the north and the northwest. Okay, so you know your sweet spot. So that's that's really good to hear. So when it comes to acquiring a, a care home and taking that over, you say problematic homes. What do you what do you identify as problematic, and 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 then how do you go around turning it around? So we we normally say PQP. When P is people. Q is quality and, and the other P is performance. Okay, so it will be lacking on one or two of those areas. Yeah. So it will have either a heavy staff turnover, a very bad CQC result, or financially unstable. Right. So you're not acquiring the management team then, you're acquiring the asset and then you're developing, you're put your you're supplanting your management team in place, or or how are you doing that? Depending on. If we acquire a company, it will come with its management team. Right. Okay. Okay. Now I've 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 witnessed this before in the in the care home industry, where actually a very good management there's a very very good management team in place, but perhaps the the culture from head office isn't quite aligning with that management team and delivering what it needs for the care home. Perhaps it's not got enough investment in it, either in, in terms of the facilities or the people inside it. And of course, investing in people is incredibly important. In terms of the major drivers that are going to change that, do you think that is a lot to do with culture or do you think it's management training that's the, the, big, the big swing that you can make in a short period of time? Dominantly, it is culture. So the, the culture being, so if you look at our organization, we say the home belongs to the home manager. Everyone else is here to support them, achieve the results that they need to, including myself, right? So we will not, so we don't have a uniform that is standard across the board. We want our people to choose the uniform that they like wearing every day. Nice, I like that, I like that. So trusting people to make the right decisions, that's that's actually what that says to me, that you're allowed to choose what you what you want inside your environment because you are empowered to make the right decisions. Is that is that right? Is that what you're that's correct. The home manager has got the right to make the decisions. The guidance will be provided, but okay. the decisions will be made by the home manager. So 
So it sounds to me like a lot of the things that you're doing, they're, they're, they're cultural. They're cultural changes, not just management training. So therefore, how do you supplant your values into that business when they perhaps, maybe they don't exist beforehand. They certainly might not be your values. Let's, let's start with what are the values that you supplant inside that business? Having, having worked for the largest company in the UK, which is British Petroleum, I wouldn't want the corporate culture coming into my, my business. So we have three values. Our first value is we are one large family, one big family. We are here to help each other. Right? And the second bit is we will be honest with everything that we do. There are no diplomatic languages we used. We will say it as what it is. And the third bit is we respect each other. So there are no hierarchies. Everyone's got a job to do and must deliver that job. Right. Okay. Does that, does that lead to higher staff retention? We have the lowest, well, in, in the size, similar size of our companies, we only have 3% vacancy rate. Wow. So okay. against the industry of 7.7%. Wow. Okay. That's, that's a very strong indicator. What about retention? What about staff retention? And okay. so, so retention is something that we are working very hard on. And we have a target of not exceeding 20% in staff turnover. Uh, and, and we are putting in a retention bonus from April onwards to keep our staff. Right. OK, so that's good. That's a that's a positive outcome. One of the things that that's come across with speaking to other business owners in and, and other users of, of care homes and, and when people have their families in there. One of the things that has come up in conversation is don't look at the wallpaper, look at the, look at the staff retention. So that that's a that's a powerful indicator about about some of your values are you finding it challenging to get the right people in the business right you're working hard to retain them i get that but but acquiring them in the first place bringing them on board do you hire for culture or do you hire for skills so as the country has got 152,000 vacancies for care staff right so so that goes but given that we are three percent only on vacancy rates we are doing much better than most. Yeah, yeah, you really are. So, and and we are also a real living wage employee, right? right? So, yeah. so we don't pay anyone less than the real living wage, right? Okay, that's 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 good news. If I if I ask you about the growth, so you mentioned the the substantial growth that you're looking to do over the next five years. Can I ask you why? I mean, lots of businesses want to grow, right? And they. The, and then sometimes it looks kind of greed, but it doesn't sound like you're driven by that, Bernie. It sounds like you've got you've got some real integrity and values to the business. So what's the motivation? Motivation is is to give empower our staff with more challenges and this. So let's say, for example, uh, you know, we are very proud to have a rating of 4.2 out of 5 by our staff on Indeed and Glassdoor. And they also give me 92% approval rating. Wow, that's great. Right. So I'm a very visible leader. Right? I, I want to be able to know most of my people by their first name. Right? But, you know, the age is catching on me, but I will have to do the best. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the critical number for that is about 150, learning everybody's name. And, and, and after that... We have about 1,500 staff right now. Wow, 1,500 staff, and you want to know all their names. Challenging, really challenging. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is really challenging. So, all right, what are the challenges? Talk about challenges. What are the challenges for your business at the moment? We've, we've talked about um, we've talked about staffing, and that's clearly a, a challenge right across the industry. What about what about you and your growth, the, your business specifically, as opposed to just the industry? So my business is probably the similar to the industry that we are highly regulated. We are highly regulated. So, so we have challenges with the way that C CQC, which is our regulator, uh, going around inspecting homes and, and uh, not coming in on a periodical basis where you can improve your, your rating a, a lot better. Yeah. So that's a challenge. That's a challenge we face. And the, and the second challenge is our margins are very, very low. Uh, so, so financially, 
it is it is a stretch. It is a stretch. But nevertheless, when you care for people, you don't look at these things as a, as a big 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 item. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So with those pressures, are you still on track for your growth goals? We are on track for our growth. Yes. Uh, so we we take three homes next week, and we take another three homes uh, in two months' time. So that's the six for every year that we need to grow to double the size of the company. Wow, that's really that's. There is a massive challenge around that of integrating culture into into team. Is it, do you have a? Uh, I don't want to keep swinging back on the culture question, but it does sound to me the biggest challenge with with acquiring new businesses is is a cultural fit. So, if you've got a stepped process for integrating that culture into the into each business into each business unit, yeah. So, so we have we we have thirty one homes in VKR Group at the moment. Yeah. And we have now started another group called Care Plus Group, yeah. which will be concentrating on uh, premium assets, if you like, yeah. right? And and the size, when it gets to 60 homes, it inevitably it results in a different culture, yeah. right? And that's what you want to avoid, right? You want to avoid that, so you want to have a small company mentality, Right in in doing that. So and and by the way, Matt, I forgot to mention that in five years' time we will be sharing fifty percent of our income with our staff. Wow, fifty percent of your income with your staff. I mean, that's pretty unheard of. Why? Why are you doing that? Because people matters. People yeah. matters when they when they do work when they do so hard for you. Why shouldn't they get returned? Yeah, look, it's it's refreshing to hear that. Most people, if they've got very aggressive growth plans, it's it's you know they want a bigger house. They want to, in some cases, they want a yacht. Um, that, but sometimes having a a why, uh, having a bigger purpose is is a stronger thing than just wanting a bigger bank balance. So, if if you're going to start in this industry again, would you do anything different? I have reflected on on my performance, and and I wouldn't say it's hundred percent perfect, and and I would have I would have derailed my growth a little bit, right, a little bit. But but having said that, my age is catching on me, so I need to do something before before I retire, yeah. which is probably about five years time, and then my children will take over from that. Right. Okay. Okay. And are you're all aligned with the vision and purpose of the company as a family? Absolutely. I think I think the, this company will be the employer of choice. Excellent. That's right. that. So people will come to work for us. They'll be delighted to work for us. Uh, and we are one big family. Yeah, that's a great that's a great purpose to have. Now, when it comes to lessons that you want to impart to your it imparts your your children is what's the one lesson that you would share with both of them that's been the most valuable lesson that you've learned in order to develop a business so never forget your staff never you're really staff centered aren't you it's really refreshing this really refreshing i think lots of people look at staff as being a tool a, a, you know something that delivers a, an objective but you clearly don't do that I'm I'm proud of I'm proud of my ninety two percent approval rating by the staff. Yeah, so you should be, so you should be. Um, coming towards the, the sort of last of my questions, Bernie. Are, are there any sort of books or uh, any videos, any any things that you'd like to share with the audience that you found particularly useful in developing you personally, or you your and or your business? Read the book called good to great oh yeah 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 jim collins fantastic book what's your favorite thing from the that jim collins book I, more than me i think some of my team members have read and they said i already have 90 percent of what is being said there ah brilliant okay so i'm more interested in the 10 percent which i don't have okay okay well listen if you're 90 percent of of the qualities of uh, that Jim Collins talks about in Good to Great, then you're doing exceptionally well. I think with a 92% approval rating by a staff, that that's a very big 
um, qualifier for, for being in the good to great bracket. So, and it sounds like you're, you're doing that. It sounds like you put the right people in place as well. I mean, Jim Collins talks a lot about um, having the right people in the right seats. And you, you've obviously done that. And you're doing that in each business unit that you're developing, right? I think generally speaking, yes. Uh, but if you ask me whether I have the right people in the right jobs, 85% is probably right. 15% needs to be renewed over time. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's, and that's the right thing. Constantly re refreshed and challenged. People need challenges. Absolutely. So are there any products or services that you're launching in the market at the moment that you want to share with me? Uh, nothing, nothing new, uh, but we have we are uh, so we are rolling out pain check into all of our homes, uh, and the pain check is is a predominantly a great value for people who can't say what they are in pain. For example, people like dementia dementia residents, and and it's been a great investment. It's been a great investment. We have invested a lot in technology. We have invested a lot in ESG. So one third of our homes are already got solar panels. And now we are going into air source energy instead of relying on gas. So we will, we will be putting in considerable amount of capital into getting our ESG right. Right, okay. You are investing in all the right things. So the name of the company, We Care Group, says that you care for your staff, you care for your residents, and you care about the environment. So it, it sounds like a really compassionate business, Bernie. I've got to be honest with you. It's refreshing to hear that compassionate perspective because when you're looking for that much growth, or sometimes there's a real tension between commerce and doing the right thing, but it sounds like you're doing the right thing in all in all the right areas. So look, I, I commend you for that. So Bernie, thank you so much for your for your time today. Really, really appreciate the chat. I'd love to find out more about your business journey. I'd love to hear more about what We Care Group are, are, are going to be doing in the future and your expansion goals. I'd love to chat with your children actually to see see how the mantle is going to be passed on. That's 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 going to be great. So thank you so much. Thanks so much for your time and we'll speak soon. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you, buddy.